Welcome to Everyday Linux User and today I am doing the Everyday Linux User Awards. Now I'm sure um, the people that make these distros aren't going to take too much notice of this but uh, it's nice to give appreciation where appreciation is deserved and as we come towards the end of the year um, lots of channels do this sort of thing. So I thought I would give it a go and so we're going to start off with the categories that we are going to award today. We've got uh, the best Linux distro for new users, uh, the best lightweight Linux distro, and I've gone for the best ultra lightweight Linux distro because you can have a lightweight Linux distro for normal machines and then you need something for the really old machines. And then most cutting edge distro, most customizable distro, uh, the most stable, the most improved, and the best overall. So without further ado, let's get into the awards. Now the obvious choice for the best Linux distro for new users is Linux Mint. It's been around a long time, it's based on Ubuntu or Debian, depending on which version you go for. It's got a very familiar and easy to follow user interface, it's got a lot of applications installed by default, it has a great package manager. It's easy to install, it's easy to use, and there's lots of support for it. So. Um, out of all the distributions, it's by far the easiest one to get up and started with. Uh, notable mentions are for Pop! OS, uh, because Pop! OS is also very easy to use. You could argue that Zorin would also be a good choice for um, the everyday Linux user. For the best lightweight Linux distribution, um, I've chosen the distribution that I use, which is Zubuntu. Zubuntu is, uses the XFCE desktop and it basically has the best combination of being lightweight but being fully functional and it's as close to bare bones as possible so it is Ubuntu based not Debian based and the reason for that is it's a lot easier to get VirtualBox running on uh, Zubuntu than it is Debian uh, it's an easier starting point for new users um, and it gives you everything you need and a good base to install software from so uh, this is my version of Zubuntu I've got here and you can see I've got all these applications at the bottom so it's easy to launch them. Uh, I've got the whisker menu at the top and this is the setup I like the most and it's um, one I've been using all year long to um, create my videos and it's easy to use and it's easy to maintain and it's incredibly stable and I, I never have to fix it. So uh, yes, Zubuntu is my choice for the best lightweight Linux distribution. So for the category of ultra lightweight Linux distributions, there are a good number of candidates available. Uh, for instance, uh, AntiX is very good, uh, especially if you want to do 32-bit, but it's also good as an ultra lightweight distribution. Uh, you could go for Devuran, uh, which is one I've looked at recently. Um, you could go for Base Debian. You could go for Base Arch. You could um, go for any one of these lightweight distributions, but the one I've gone for, because this is the Everyday Linux User Channel, which is um, Linux distributions for the normal computer users that want to use their computer, um, and they might not be as tech savvy as other computer users, um, Q4 OS is my choice because it's ultra lightweight, but it's easy to install and incredibly usable. So uh, Q4 OS looks a lot like Windows um, and you can even make it, um, if you see my recent video with the XP Q4 um, add-on, you can make it look like any version of Windows you want. So whether that's a good or a bad thing, uh, Q4 OS is actually really, really lightweight and really easy to use. Now the most cutting edge distro, uh, that's easy, that's got to be Arch. Uh, it's the one that stays as up to date as you can possibly get at all times. Uh, there are some other options available if you don't want to go down the Arch route, if you think that Arch might be too difficult to maintain. Uh, you could go for Fedora, um, you could also go for OpenSUSE, the roll and release version. Uh, and if you want to stick on an Arch theme, you can go for Endeavor, um, Garuda, yeah, you can go for Manjaro as well. So Arch wins the most cutting edge distribution category. Now arguably Arch could have also won the next category which is the most customizable uh, distribution uh, but instead I've gone for Debian and the reason I've gone for Debian is that 
one, it's a base distribution. So base distributions are always going to be the best to be customizable. And because you can install it in a minimal way, you can get a complete base inst installation and then build the blocks on top of it. And the difference between Arch and Debian is Debian's more stable and therefore more likely to uh, do what you want it to do in the long term. And it's going to take less effort to keep it working. Uh, so I use Debian as my base distribution and then I put the building blocks on top and it's a very easy to install your own window managers, your own panels, your own applications, uh, customize your desktop the way you want it to, uh, all the sort of things that you want to do to make your distribution work exactly the way you want it to. And so for that reason, Debian wins this category as the most customizable distribution. Debian also wins the award for the most stable distribution uh, for the reasons I just mentioned. Uh, I have used Debian based distributions uh, for a long time and they are rock solid. You very rarely get any issues with them. The, the software might not be as up to date as it is for other distributions, but you know that the software that is installed is going to work. It is the best place if you really don't want to keep managing updates, keep managing your installation. If you just want to turn your computer on and have it working, uh, set up Debian, install the applications you want, and you are good to go, and there's minimal interruptions. So yes, Debian also wins the most stable distribution. The most improved distribution, and this may surprise some people, is actually Ubuntu. Uh, I had the pleasure of installing Ubuntu 23.10 and I thought it was just going to be a new installer and a new uh, package manager but the new package manager does actually make a vast improvement on the old um, Ubuntu so so much easier to install packages now and it feels um, like it's going to work every time and on top of that snaps actually feel like they're actually working um, well as well well they're not as clunky as they were before so um, I did a performance test uh, a couple of months back and the snaps were almost as quick to install as native Debian packages so yeah Ubuntu is actually very usable now and uh, it, it wins the category for the most improved distribution of 2023 and finally uh, this is the big one this is uh, what I consider to be the best overall um, if you take all the categories into consideration. So it's not been mentioned in any of the lists, which may surprise you that it then comes out overall the best. But the one I've gone for is actually MX Linux. So the reason I've gone for MX Linux is the best overall distribution. One, it's based on Debian, which we know is rock solid and stable. Two, it uses the XFCE desktop environment, which is lightweight, which means it's a lightweight distribution. Three, because it's Debian based, it's highly customizable. And finally, number four, is MX Linux provides the best combination of being easy to install and relatively easy to use for new users as well as being a overall good distribution long term. So whilst Linux Mint's great for new users, um, I, I think MX Linux for users as they go on in time is an overall better distribution but they're not um, having to worry about uh, some of the intricacies of Debian. They're not um, so cutting edge with Arch that the system's going to break all the time. And for that reason, I think MX Linux is the best overall Linux distribution. And that is the end of the video. Uh, let me know in the comments whether you agree, disagree. Uh, this is all my opinion uh, based on years of using different Linux distributions. And I try to do it for the everyday Linux user, which is a normal Linux user, not tech heads. This isn't for the people that are know everything about computers. This is for people that just want to use their computer um, for watching videos, getting on the line, um, and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in 2024 on Everyday Linux User.